all, I want to thank Miguel and Francisco for all this effort. Uh, I, I, it has been a, an impressive organization uh, on these forums. I, I thank them about the, uh, for the invitation and for uh, all the work this has meant to them. Uh, I'm going to be talking about how artificial intelligence and big data affect foresight uh, methodologies or future studies. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit before uh, sharing my presentation how this idea came about. Um, I, we, um, as some of you uh, may already know, I'm a professor and a direct of, and director of the master's degree program on strategic foresight at Tecnológico de Monterrey. The master's degree program has been around since the year 2000. It has a more or less a, a 20 years history. And it has gone through several uh, curriculum revisions. And uh, in that one, we, we have been working on the last one for the last, uh, from last year and this year. And we were thinking, the faculty of the program, introducing uh, big data and artificial intelligence as some of the core competencies of the program. So we've, we've been thinking and designing the program, how can we link this to foresight methods and future methods? So all this reflection, uh, I was, as one, I was going, going through all this reflection when I received an email of the then editor of the World Futures Review Journal, uh, the Professor Dater, asking for some ideas about uh, some special topics or uh, special edited topics about uh, that could be part of a, of a special edition of theme edition of the World Futures Review Journal. So I, I thought like that this could be this could be a good opportunity to have some insights of uh, professional futurists and people who do foresight of how does this big data and artificial intelligence linked to the to the futures and foresight methods. So this is this this talk is uh, around those those results that we received about, uh, in in this in this number. So I'm going to share my screen here. Um, if you have any question, please just let me know. I'm still uh, getting around the presentation and working with Zoom, so have a little patience. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the the title of the presentation is Big Data and Artificial Intelligence in a Jumer Centered Approach. Uh, I know that big data and artificial intelligence are talking, or the the trend is that that they will automate many of the processes, and maybe the human will no longer be necessary. But I, I, I'm in in all these reflections. One of the main insight we we I, I can grasp of the different papers and things we received uh, as, as uh, a contribution to this number was that the human is still necessary for all the uh, analysis and processes of foresight and futures methods. So um, the main question was well regarding this editorial, this, this journal number was, how is strategic foresight and future studies are using big data? And this is because if you know uh, foresight and futures methodologies, there are a whole number of them. They are like the Millennium Project had a, had a, has identified around 39 methodologies. And these methodologies uh, range from really, really quantitative methods to more qualitative methods working more with participatory systems, but others are modeling and systems models and uh, robust decision making, et cetera, et cetera. So there is a wide range that we can classify more qualitative or more quantitative. And, and, and the competences the students need to learn and apply these methods are also different. So there is a whole range and many of these are also adapting and using new methods like big data and artificial intelligence for provide new insights. One central example of this is horizon scanning. When we 20 years ago there we, we used to do horizon scanning the traditional way like searching and 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 looking for blogs or or, or uh, uh, going to conferences or looking at different pieces of information and right now there are much more powerful ways and methods to do horizon scanning like 
many of futurists right now use uh, a website or as a web service is called Shaping Tomorrow, which the, the, the main objective of this uh, website is to scan thousands of thousands of, of sources for uh, identifying insights of what is the future of something. So the methods are, are already evolving and, and many of the methods used for foresight methods in the future studies, maybe it will also evolve to uh, what will be the, uh, uh, how can we use this, this, this tool to do better for foresight pathologies or in future and um, futures methods, um, but also uh, which are the opportunities and risks and risks the people in the vision of, of future studies and uh, uh, mission. I mean, many people is using it, but there are so many questions still to ask for. So we are not sure what what what's next or what will be the next steps in all this uh, progression of, of, of adopting this kind of methods. And uh, what role does or should big data and, and artificial intelligence play in future studies and foresight? I mean, uh, there's, there's been a discussion and, and for futurist and foresight professional, it's clear that the, the aim of future studies is not to predict, is to uh, explore future possibilities of plausible futures. And there is also a, a big discussion about plausibility against probability. There is not the same thing. And, some, and, and, and when we talk about big data and artificial intel intelligence, we talk more about near-term future and not long-term futures. So I, I will talk a, a little bit more about that in, in, in the following slides. So, <clears throat> Just to clarify a little bit about the concept, uh, big data and artificial intelligence um, are, um, are, is not a new concept. The, 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 the concept of artificial intelligence was first used around 1956, and it, 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 it was a, a, a conference uh, and it became recognized as an academic field. Uh, but along the way, there has been different uh, ups and downs in, in, the, in the development of, of the discipline of, of artificial intelligence. And, and, and it is related to the different uh, interests in the academia or uh, in the military or in the business interest. And also is related to the different uh, discoveries or advances in the field of, the, of artificial intelligence. So, when something new comes up, that the, the interest got, seems to go up, and people get engaged, and then suddenly it goes if it, it, it goes down it goes down a little bit. Um, but how, what what are we referring when we talk about big data and artificial intelligence? Intelligence. Well, big data is usually referred to as usually described using five Vs, like the volume. There is a great quantity of data. Velocity. How fast can we use that data? Uh, uh, the variety, we are not talking only text, but uh, videos, pictures, images. Uh, veracity is how, how valid this data is, and the value is how much it, it, it uh, is useful for, for any organization or for, or for people. So, uh, and the other way around artificial intelligence uh, is more like an umbrella concept. It seems to include so it, it's uh, along the, 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 the history of the use of the concept is to include or exclude different concepts in, 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 in its, its broad category. And it's, it isn't a complete uh, definition of what is artificial inter intelligence. For some is some, um, some, uh, some state that artificial intelligence is though that that machines can do yet. So it's a broad definition of what is artificial intelligence. So um, this, is, uh, this is taken from uh, Professor Dator uh, editorial and it's a possible continuum of human and artificial inter intelligence interaction. We are now since uh, 56 that artificial intelligence, so we, we, went, we began talking about artificial intelligence. We are around point number five where it executes that suggests the, the artificial in uh, intelligence executes a decision if the human approves. We are now in that period and it take, out, take, take us to get there around 60 years. So um, how long would it take, uh, take us to go all the way through all these phases of artificial intelligence? Well, we don't know. And also there are many questions still on the table. 
uh, there are many things that we are not sure about. We are what 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 the ethical dilemmas around around the, all this progression of all this continuum about a human and artificial intelligence interaction. For some, uh, this this uh, this is a really really good thing because there are so many benefits and potentials for for others. Uh, there is a big threat in all this artificial intelligence and, and big data using. So it, it, it has like opposing views that are not resolved right now. Um, I'm sorry about that. Um, so big data and artificial intel intelligence. Uh, wait, I, I've seen that there are some comments here in the chat. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, well, big data and artificial intelligence. Uh, since 2010, there has been a renewed interest uh, and development affecting all disciplines. Like everyone is using uh, artificial, or m not everyone, but many disciplines are now adopting artificial intelligence and uh, big and that big data usage usage in this. Um, in, in to do different different uh, kind of research and it's like adopting this methodologies has been adopted for adopted for for all for many disciplines so uh, we they are providing us with new ways to do research and affecting decision making um, why is the reason of this big hype of big data right now well it's for for one thing is the improved computing storage capability we right now we have the ability to process large quantities of data that we weren't able to do so also there is a super fast speed processing machine uh, the advances on the neural networks and deep learning, especially since 2010, that has brought this big hype on the use of, of, of these uh, tools for, uh, for of, 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 of machine learning and artificial intelligence. And one of the most important ones uh, is the explosion of data that we have produced in the last years, millions and millions of data that wasn't, wasn't we weren't able to do so. But the, 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 um, the dilemma persists. For, for some, this is a really good opportunity. For others, it's a, it's a really big threat. And this threat is the ethical dilemmas that big data and artificial intelligence represents, and also the ethical side of artificial intelligence and big data related to privacy, to uh, many the use of algorithms and 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 things like that. Wait, <laughs> I know I'm sorry about the dog. Uh, I know I'm sorry. Uh, okay. So there are some problems to be resolved uh, as as we. As I mentioned before, uh, one of the big problems about big data and artificial intelligence has, is big data and uh, artificial intelligence are based on pre-existing data. So if the quality of the data is biased, then the quality of the result of the analysis of artificial of the logarithm will be biased. So as some of the authors have stated, if the garbage enter, garbage get out. So we have to, to be aware of this. Uh, to to if, if we're gonna let artificial intelligence to take decisions. Another is um, the quality. Uh, pro these quality problems range from biases uh, to discrimination in decision making. And we I'm I'm gonna mention a couple of, of examples about this. Also, um, for some in 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 this continuum of artificial intelligence and human interaction. Um, uh, Big data, artificial intelligence is taking decision. But when, when I go at, at what level we are going to let artificial intelligence to make decision? Is the tactical operative level, or are we going to are we going to be talking about uh, talking about a strategic decision making? Uh, that's why my, my my proposal at the end is 
that the interpretation of the data still need a human-centered approach for decision-making. Yes, we can get great insight with use of data and artificial intelligence, but we need, still need the human to do this analysis behind them. Um, also, one of the biggest problem, problems is who produces all the data. Although we are producing many, 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 many terabits, terabits of data, uh, there are some people still included of this production of data. So who are excluded and how can we uh, include their views in this analysis? Because if, 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 we, if we do not do that, some excluding communities are getting behind. And um, one thing that, that is important regarding foresight and future studies is Big data and artificial intelligence are useful for studying near-term futures or short-term futures, but not necessarily long-term futures. It's the immediacy of the data that let us help us take decision in the, in the present. And, and that is the idea of foresight also, that how these images of the futures help us to make decisions in the present. But the difference is like big data and artificial intelligence can help us uh, detect emerging trends, emerging trends and changes from the data we have been using, but maybe they are not really useful to imagine futures, long-range futures. So, <clears throat> well, what do we, what do we have? Uh, the first point of, of something that should be addressed is the quality of the data, the need of the, the biasing the, the existing data. For some, this can be so simple as uh, doing or, or 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 fixing some 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 of the data for for others it's really really difficult uh, some notable examples exist like the compass system the compass system is uh, the racist incidence of, of correctional people that it it, it showed that it, it was uh, the algorithms resulted uh, in, in in bss uh, of race against uh, people of color and the most recent example about the apple card regarding to gender that was last year that it seems to give a uh, low credit uh, to to women so some these are some of the best biases that we we have to work oh i'm getting to that let give me uh, uh about the examples give me a couple of minutes and i will get to that okay um how complex is to do this well I, I, as I have said, there are conflicting views. For many people, it's really, it, it should be really easy. For the, the others, it's much more difficult. And well, there are also some ethical implications regarding the data and the risk, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, regarding the risk about social media algorithm. Facebook algorithm, it's, it's regarding for, the, for the, the repetition of what we search or what we like, Facebook put us similar content and they we we began to, to think that everything is like that and it produces like echo chambers and also the use of algorithm that gives you give give us like extreme content that the, and and the effects of all this uh, ethical implication and risk um pose to the uh a society is also some some uh, 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 some ethical risks So, how is uh, how big data and artificial in intelligence are used to for decision making? Well, right now, uh, if if we talk about the foresight process, one of the first steps steps of the foresight process is horizontal scanning, understanding the context, context and the env environment. This is one of the first first of steps steps, and uh, right now. Um, Artificial intelligence and big data is being used for that, for identifying what are the main trends. And before we didn't have that capability, this, 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 the opportunity to identify all these trends uh, using big data and artificial intelligence is and produce valuable insight is really, really valuable right now. And 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 I, I think we we are gonna get to the point that we. We won't be able to do this without the, the, the tools of artificial intelligence and, and big data because they, they gave you very valuable uh, information and it, it will be uh, impossible for uh, a person to do, the, to do those analysis with this, with this tool, without these tools. But 
in, when we are talking about the strategic, strategic decision making, we need the human, uh, uh, the human analysis. Uh, and the, the machine will, is not able to take the decision. So it, it, is, it still needs a human component. So um, this is a, a, a rather debate if, if big data and artificial intelligence are going to be able to make the, the decision. And for times and future studies, um, go beyond uh, the, the identification of only trends and, and the, it's, it's a good uh, input to the process, but the idea of future studies and foresight is to imagine different futures. So uh, big data and artificial intelligence are useful for anticipating in the near term or short term, but not in the really long term of imagining different futures for that allow for at this level of a strategic thinking and decision making. And this is, this is linked to innovation processes, to design thinking, to um, uh, prepare for, for the possible, right? So one of the recent examples in, in, in this was, um, uh, I, I, many of you already know, is the, the, the blue dot example of how this, this uh, company using big data and IA was able to detect COVID nine days before the WHO and six days before the CDC. This has some good things and bad things. The good things is, well, blue dot was having trade epidemiology that were able to detect this uh, this, this was happening and, and show the alert to, to its client members. But the ethical implication is only who were, who had the serve, blue dot search service received the alert. So there are some ethical implication, but as a unintended consequence, there was another company that, that lodged its epi epidemic tracker for free. So these kind of, of ethical dilemmas are the ones that that we we have we should be talking about uh, regarding the use of big data and artificial intelligence. So near term or long term future, uh, as I say, big data and I are useful for spreading near term futures and changing trends. Um, uh, when you talk about long range futures, for many futurists and foresight professionals. Well, a qualitative, quantitative uh, uh, method is more uh, recommended rather a, 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 quantitative, a quantitative one because quantitative, is, quantitative methods approach to future studies and foresight is useful for, short ter for the short term while qualitative or a mix of qualitative qualitative are more useful for the long term. So these participative methods where you you get the people to work with images of the future. The main in, um, uh, material of future studies and foresight are images. People, what, what the people imagine of how that future will be. So that, that, that's, that, what, what, that is what do we analyze while what, what we, are, we are working with foresight and future processes. Yes, the past is important. So we understand what had happened and when was the last big change but what are the, 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 the mental models of the, of the people of how the future will be like? And these foresight process, processes forces people for a reframing through different methodologies, maybe a scenario planning, to a reframing of these mental models to imagine different futures and to question the assumptions the people have about these futures. Um, <clears throat> So it, for, for many futurists and future studies uh, um, for state professional, developing future studies competences is useful for, ima for imagining better futures and novel futures. So wait, let me see. Uh, in what ways do you ambition artificial revenue? Well, uh, Maybe some of the methodologies that we as a futurist or foresight professional use could include different, in different ways and different levels, the use of artificial intelligence and big data. I mean, if we work with images of the futures and, and big data and artificial intelligence give us 
this opportunity to not only analyze text through different but also images maybe we we could design or or redesign different methodologies using artificial intelligence and uh, big data I, I think that many of the methods that are used right now in future studies and foresight are now adopting these new this 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 these different tools and methods for introducing or for getting more insights about um, about how to do foresight and future studies. But but uh, the important thing is that we let it is important for us that big data future study big data and artificial intelligence does not does not constrain how we imagine different futures and plausible futures. Because that 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 for me is one of the risks of of using big data and future studies. Sorry, big data and artificial intelligence. So, what are some of the conclusions about this? Uh, well, a forward, further dia dialogue of ethical implication of artificial intelligence and big data is needed. Uh, we, I think that we need to put these questions on the table and foresight methods and future studies are a good framework for doing this because it let, let us include several stakeholders and uh, construct a common vision of that future. So foresight method and future studies is a big framework for, it's a good framework for studying how Artificial intelligence, intelligent big data can affect the future futures and, and, and respond to this, some of these ethical dilemmas. Um, future studies and foresight can also help to analyze the role of cultures in construction, this image as a plausible future. Culture uh, plays an important role of how can how we, we imagine these futures. Uh, some part of this culture is language. So some 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 of those different uh, cultures have more short-term minded languages and some more long-term minded uh, um, uh, languages so all this affect how we we ambition the short term medium term and long term so how, how can 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 and we we can analyze culture to construct these futures and there are still important challenges to address uh, the black box of, of the algorithm. So, so we don't know what happened inside the algorithm black box. So this this sometimes this is one of the of the big uh, limitation for decision making since we don't know what happened inside and until we have uh, transparency and, and, and to, to know how this algorithm took decision, we cannot uh, take this decision. And the biases here and building into data and how to fix them is another big problem, that's, as we already mentioned. The way we decide to use IEM big data for decision making, that, that's also a, a big discussion. And what, what, what I have already said, that big data and artificial intelligence, intelligence should not constrain on living how we envision alternative future. That it, it's a great opportunity, it gives you great insight, but we still have to think on, on open end about plausible futures and and think how how this could be. Um, where all this this came from? Well, this is uh, the, the papers. I have the the the, the opportunity to to quote it in the in the journal of futures of world futures review. Uh, you can some some of them are already available in the in the in the journal so i'm gonna go a little bit about uh the questions here wait let me um is there an example of how foresight practitioner acting using big data tool and i yes i think uh, there are some methods that are using big data and artificial intelligence uh, mainly, for example, uh, in correction and scanning methodologies of true natural language processing, uh, they, they, they scan millions and millions of data and get insights about the future. Uh, others are using also uh, the use of big data, uh, on, especially for 
there is a methodology uh, developed at, 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 at RAND that is called robust decision making. And robust decision making is like modeling uh, millions and millions of scenarios in the future to detect which, which, which of those scenarios uh, uh, reach some parameters for uh, to, at that aid to strategic decision making. Um, and there, there are different methodologies that use big data and artificial intelligence right now, but some of the methodologies are, are, are updating. Um, is there an example of how forced practitioners are actually using big data to an IE? Yes, most of the papers that we received in the special edition were for uh, horizontal scanning, like horizontal scanning for detecting weak signals and, and how they are using how, how to they're detecting the, uh, uh, these emerging trends. Also, uh, we received a paper wow. about uh, the future city index, uh, it, uh, of, about Andy Hines, how some cities are, are more future oriented and this could be useful for it, uh, using, I think it was using social media uh, data and how, how these, these cities were more future oriented and how this could be like test best wow. for a strategy or new product uh, introduction in different regions that, that were more as a, as, as a city future oriented. So, so there are some things that, that are happening, happening there. Um, foresight goes beyond AI and big data, yes. Will these two hold leaders and policy makers back from considering alternative futures? What can help us get beyond these limitations? Well, for me, we are in different um, points in the, in, the, in, the, in the adoption um, of this, uh, in the adoption of, of, of force of methodologies. I can tell you that in, in, in the case of Mexico, we are far, far, far behind. But in case of some Nordic countries, there are much more advanced in the process of adopting foresight and futures methodology for imagined alternative futures. So um, how can we do this? Uh, uh, there is a, uh, uh, for, for many people, there is a, a central tendency in, in data and not this, this there, is an, there isn't enough time to imagine futures possibilities. So, um, we should try to to get these methods adopted from the micro to the meso to the macro. I mean, uh, there is I, I have done several foresight uh, processes in, in in Mexican companies and in in companies the the, the adoption the adoption of foresight process is you, you still face resistance from decision makers. So especially from for for because they they are more used to see different the information given in different ways. So it, it, it's complex. I, I think it's, it's, it's a work in process, but I, I, hopefully we, we can, we can uh, I mean, it's what Fresh Force and Future Studies has trying to do for the last, uh, I don't know, 50 or 60 years. Um, oh, at which step are we on the moment of the slide of, uh, human AI interactions. Let me let me put that again. Wait a second. Well. For me, we are around the number five here, around here. Uh, at first, we enter with no assistance, and we 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 I offer a complete set of additional alternatives. Now, this can give you some some selection down to a few, then suggest one alternative. And right now, we are still in uh, that suggestion if the human approves or in the six between the five and the six. How, dear Felicity, how long it will take us to the other way, to, to the old, old, all the, the continuum to A, decide everything and act autonomously and ignore human? I don't know if, uh, if, if even we, we will get there. So, so <clears throat> yes, it's, it's, it, it took us around 60 years to get to these five, more or less six points. How long will it will take us to, 
to go from one step to the other? I'm not sure. For uh, what I, I read about, uh, some people think that we are we are in a, in a in a in a period of exponential change, and maybe things that took us 50 or 60 years will take you will take us right now five years. But uh, it's it's a big uncertainty, and and I think that that that's something a future study can work work with, like uh, how fast this exponential change, because. Uh, Sometimes we think this, this, we have this idea that this, this will go very, very fast, but what are the, the, the possible uh, constraints that will make this stop or go a little bit uh, slower? Um, for some, this, this idea of super intelligence is just around the corner. For others, uh, it's, it's, we are so, so, so far away. So there are conflicting views still. Uh, <clears throat> Can you elaborate a little bit on how weak signals are identified with IA? Do algorithms spot unique emerging issues at the edges or look better? Well, with the complexity of weak signals, is is like when uh, Peter Bishop says, like uh, sometimes sometimes you detect something in the periphery, and if if nothing happens, well, uh, you. Maybe you made a mistake. If something happened, you were able to detect that weak signal. I think a, a good example was the exactly the blue dot example that like uh, they they were they, they they were able to detect this weak cycle that something was happening, but because there was there were some special specialized people, human professionals behind this analysis. So someone has to be interpreting these signals for to be able to detect this, what, what is what is really happening and pinpoint that is that, that is a weak signal so you have to have some kind of, some kind of human knowledge behind to 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 understand what that insight mean because maybe for someone who wasn't a trained epidemiologist wouldn't detect that seven or eight cases or nine cases of pneumonia in some city in 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 China was a weak signal of something. So it, you have to have uh, uh, a human centered analysis bef uh, uh, in, in, in to be able to detect, detect these weak signals. Uh, what are good examples of use of big data and AI in foresight used by policy making? Well, I think that uh, some of them are using this uh, are, are using many are using for detecting weak signals and for detecting uh, to do trend analysis and 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 but it, it depends on on and and maybe also all this uh, all this analysis of this pandemic is also trying to use all this potential of big data and artificial intelligence. And, when also, uh, and what, what, what it also has shown us, at least in Mexico, is that we have so many information that sometimes, uh, and so many opposing views, and, 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 and it depends on, on, the, on, the, on, on the analysis uh, people are making behind all this, this, this big quantity of data, that that it's it also requires like this to solve these ethical dilemmas behind the use of big data and and, and artificial intel intelligence to predict in what will happen. So it's it's I, I think it's, it's there are many many opportunities here, but also big challenges of of how we can do this. But yes, it's 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 it's. I think that that, that we are uh, in that period of of time where we are starting starting to use this 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 new tools for better decision making, and and I think that will be the end, the 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 final objective of using uh, big data and artificial intelligence to aim in decision to aid in decision making processes, but. Um, we can make mistakes. If we don't fix this underlying dilemmas, we can make mistakes on, on, on the use of, of big data and of an artificial intelligence. Uh, 
Oh, uh, follow-up question, uh, USFA models. There is a methodology uh, developed by RAND called robust decision making that use precisely this, this uh, simulation of millions and millions of, of scenarios. You can find it at RAND. They, ha they have been using it for uh, uh, water management uh, problems and uh, different uh, different projects regarding uh, climate change and things like that. Uh, uh, it, it's a methodology and it also included in the Millennium Project list of methodologies uh, about um, uh, of, of a futures method. And, and that's also uh, something that, that that's interesting about futures methodologies, it, let, love about methodologies identified at futures futures methods, future research methods. Uh, some are not, uh, created as futurist of foresight, but are adopted as a futures methods because they deal with the future. So it's, it's, that, that's why there is a broad range of futures methods. Um, uh, and and it, 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 they are uh, some very, 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 very quantitative, like this one, like proposition making, and some very qualitative, like a scenario planning methodology regarding some, some of, of the, of the, of the methods. Um, why is the role of artificial intelligence and data science in the scenario planning? Well, I, I will think that uh, artificial intelligence and data science is the first step of the process. Uh, you can use it in the first step of the process. I mean, uh, when, you are when you are trying to understand the content, what is happening out there? And also, one of the other one of the of the things I've been thinking about is what what will be how how would we will do the scenario planning practice after COVID. I mean, uh, uh, for many people, well, scenario planning is a highly participative uh, uh, activity or 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 uh, methodology. So, how can this how can can how can can, can this methodology be modified to to adapt to this new normal, it's it's one of, of 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 the things I've been thinking because many of the foresight methodologies and methods are are are, are highly participative in nature, in nature. So you have to go to the company or to travel with the to come to to work with a group of people. So right now all the all that has been put on hold or or it's it's hard to imagine how we can we do this without uh, if, if 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 we take time to go back to normal to do or how will be this new normal uh under the assumption of information is power in your opinion why governments are not capable of using ai to enforce the role in health and climate change improvements for society well i think it uh they are they are using it the thing was big uh, in my opinion the thing with big data and artificial intelligence with big data is is as 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 many of the data of, of using data or, or at least in 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 in, in, in what, what what i have seen in in latin american countries in, specifically in mexico you can make look the data in a way so uh uh what are the assumptions behind how you use this information i mean uh, and and that this is related to ethically how what can how can we use big data and artificial intelligence so it, it's it's kind of um uh we 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 want to do it but we uh, our priority is not climate change it's economy so so it's 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 something we 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 haven't been able to solve. Uh, it's like uh, the greater good. We 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 should solve today's uh, problems, or we should worry for future generations. And and some 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 of authors refers to this as colonizing the future. We are taking decisions today that will affect future generations and. We we do not care so so the future generation are much more bigger than 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 and, and, and we are um, how do you say it we are uh, we are compromising their future but for us 
what with what as as humanity for us it it it, it has been okay it's it's not okay but it has been okay so it's it's a prioritize uh, I, I think government prioritize the short term or at least in Latin American countries or in in, in specific in of, of Mexico uh, Latin, uh, in uh, we, we prioritize the short term or the medium term uh, versus the long term on and future generations um question do you think that latin america is better or worse prepared to face COVID than other parts of the world all these new technologies enough uh well what we have seen latin america has been struggling some countries of latin america are struggling with with with, with COVID. um uh, some Me mexico is it's they, they say the worst is coming i'm i'm not sure what what how it, it how what what will happen what will happen if we ha we will have enough uh, hospital beds respirator respirators and 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 what will happen it it's it seems for us like like for many government is is not making enough uh is not doing enough to to keep the people inside to stop uh the 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 pandemic uh this morning I was seeing the news and it says that in many cities uh, in the country today it's a it's a holiday here in Mexico because 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 we are in the in the break of Holy Week so many people uh, uh, Catholic people go to 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 celebrate this this festivity and go out and the beaches are full some of the beaches in in some states of the country so how will this what will what will happen it's 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 the 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 government response has hasn't been strong enough so yes uh i'm 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 not sure latin america i think it's not well prepared for what is happening with the, with the pandemic mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on the ethical responsibility of foresight practitioners using artificial intelligence to avoid using some black box algorithm if a lot of foresight are not savvy in computer? Well, that's one of the, I think it's not exclusively for foresight and future studies. Maybe it's more, in, uh, well, uh, that, that's that dilemma is for every discipline or uh, academic discipline that uses big data and artificial intelligence. It's, it's been like uh, widespread and many people are not uh, data science experts that know how the algorithm works. So this one, th this is one of the ethical, uh, ethical implication, implication we should be discussing about. For some, the, the, we, we shouldn't be, we shouldn't let artificial intelligence take decision until there is a transparency in how the algorithm took that decision. But with deep learning, this has, has become increasingly complicated, complicated because we don't know what the process is in, what, how, how the algorithm, algorithm process, that, that decision-making processes. So that is why for some, uh, artificial intelligence can aid in decision-making processes, but should not, um, but the human must must the, the 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 human analysis must be behind this decision making processes, because we are not able still to see what is the behind the black box algorithm. So until we are able to do that, we we should uh, let the the algorithm the algorithm and artificial intelligence uh, 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 take decision or or, or be responsible be responsible of decision making. So I don't know if, if if there's some if there's something or if I was able to answer the majority of the questions. Uh, in what ways do you envision artificial applying amplifying human capabilities to build alternative realities and narratives? <clears throat> well, I think that uh, artificial intelligence and big data can give you. Can, can give you very valuable insights of what people are thinking and and, and imagining about these futures uh, and 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 can help us uh, identify these futures and assumptions behind what we these mindsets or mind maps behind 
how we imagine this, this, this plausible futures. Because everyone have like a map, a mental map of how, how thing works. So maybe this, this um, I am big data given the, 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 the variety of the information that we can uh, access can give us more, more insight about these futures narratives and, and much more in, in quantity. So, uh, let me see if there's something else. More chat. I'm sorry, I'm just seeing the chat. Correct and local thinking. Okay, thank you. Well, I don't know if there are any more questions. I think I was able to answer it. Uh, I think I, I was a, able to answer it. There's one question, Guillermina. I think there is one question missing uh, in the Q&A at the uh, mm -hmm. top of it, Gabriel uh, de Souza. Uh, what are the tool system sources related to IAM Big Data that are already in the market that we can use to provide insights? Well, one really uh, that many futures use is Shaping Tomorrow. Uh, Shaping Tomorrow is a web service of, uh, of artificial intelligence that is useful for doing horizontal scanning and other activities. They're hard. They are uh, what what it's. There is a paper in the in, in the. In this edition of the of the World Future Review, written by by, by one of the of, of, of the creator of the system, Michael uh, Jackson, and he defined he is basically a, a, a Athena robot that scan thousands of thousands of uh, sources using natural language processing, and then uh, when when you download the the, the Excel sheet, it it classified it classified by uh, three horizon, the CLA, the, uh, the CLA uh, frame of analysis, uh, the data ar archetypes, the four archetypes of, of futures. Uh, so there, there are th that that's one of the most uh, known one um, using this kind of of, uh, of artificial intelligence and 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 big data capabilities. Uh, I think that when you download the, 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 the insight that, that the robot of different topics, uh, when, when it's, it were like, it were like a Google search, you, you put the, the, this, the, the concept in the, in the search engine and the, it gives you all the, the hits, hints about the future related, uh, regarding that topic in not, not only the title, but the content. So it scans different different uh, sources. So I, that's that, that's one of the of the of the most used, I think, right now, uh, uh, scanning as a web scanning services. Um, IEM big data are tools now used by a minority of organization. How quickly do you say these tools becoming mainstream? Well, I, I'm I'm not sure. Uh, uh, for me, it depends on 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 on, on how this will uh, will progress. I I, 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 I say, in, in at least, I'm seeing a big hype and and, and big uh, interest in the use of these tools. But how how proficient are every uh, profession to 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 be able to use them? I, I'm I'm not sure about it. So so. Because right now it still requires some kind of uh, capability to know how to use them. So, so maybe in, in, in the near future it will be easier and, and maybe it will help to, 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 to use it. I, I, I think that it's going really, it's, it's going fast, but I, I don't know how, how fast also because there are some ethical dilemmas that, that, that we need to 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 answer before uh, before this 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 complete adoption of, of IAM big data. Uh, 